Okay, I guess this is happening. I am moving on to the next space. But the question is, what am I going to renovate next? I just finished the kitchen and my boot room and I only have two other rooms in this house. Okay, let's check out my options. First, I have the room in which I live right now. The plan is to make this a dining slash study area. I live here. So this is option number one. I sleep here. I work here. I have my clothes here, my plants, everything that can't get too cold during winter because it's the only room that I heat. It's the smallest room. It's a little bit like a student room right now. If I were to renovate this room next, I would have to move somewhere else. And where could I live that I could take all my things <laughs> with me? I guess that means I would have to move into the guest house. So let's check out option number two. So this, this is option number two. It's gonna fall. Okay. Option number two, the living room, AKA my current timber room. This is essentially my workshop. My mitre saw lives here. This is where I cut wood, where I store wood. Where I have my little fireplace that isn't functioning right now. This is where I am going to create a living room. Actually not just a living room because this is also going to be a bedroom without looking like a bedroom during the day. I do have an attic space. I think it requires a lot of structural work to actually make that suitable for a, a living space. Otherwise I would put a bedroom there and who knows in the future I might want to tackle that. I just want to make this comfortable and functional for everything that I need. In theory it would be better if I could do this room first because well then I can keep living in the other room. The problem is everything that is in here I am storing all of the timber, so many sheet materials, simply don't have anywhere else to put any of this. All of this timber is so long that it doesn't fit anywhere else. It doesn't fit in a shed, it doesn't fit in a guest house, it can't fit in any of the other rooms. I wouldn't be able to relocate it. So, well, I guess that answers my question. I'm going to have to renovate my room. Hmm. I guess that means I'm going to renovate this room and then I'm going to have to get rid of all of these things in it and keep them warm somehow. I think I'm going to share my design ideas for this room and check the materials that I have and I am going to draw up some elevations. I am going to take a look at the timber that I currently have. All right, most of my timber is here and I'm thinking that perhaps I should measure what I have so I know how much I can do because I don't have enough for the entire space. A lot of this is actually the tongue and groove and when I made this order, some of this is from a year ago, I actually got all of the timber for the flooring in all of the rooms and I cut it to size which was perhaps a mistake because now I'm thinking rather than keep the flooring for this room I should just use the timber for the walls in the other room because I think I have enough for some of the walls but not all of it. Yeah let's do some measuring and writing down what I actually have. Mine 
I have some of these 45 by 45s. They're quite important. All right, let's check the sheds. Let's have a look at the overall plan first, just to kind of go through the entire concept again. I even created a 3D version of the space, which is so cool to see. This is the front entrance and this is the back entrance, which I was just working on. I never did a 3D for the entrance area and the kitchen but this is what we are looking at right now. So in the future, when I'll start using the front entrance again, right now there's timber in the way, but in the future I'll use the front entrance and then you'll go right into this little study slash dining area. And this little door brings you into the kitchen to the back. Let me share a couple of scenes with you. You can see that it's a really small space. And that's why I want to keep the materiality very basic, but I do want to create a little bit of interest. And I am thinking about, for example, having the bookcase in a different material, but what that could be, I have no idea. A different material or a different stain maybe. I really like the idea of having a continuous sort of built-in piece of furniture along the edges of the space to just tie everything together and to create a very uniform design style. So here we have a kitchen which turns into a desk, which turns into banquet seating, which will be dining height. And then in the living room, this turns into a built-in sofa. In the living room, I want to be able to pull out part of this banquette seating and turn this into a bed. But right now we are focusing on this room and this is my plan. I am going to change this entry point between the kitchen and this dining room study. This is my overall mood image for this area and this is what we're basically looking at. Little French doors. Oh my gosh, I would love to put glass in the doors as well to get more light into the kitchen. So it'll be a narrow door, two leaves, you'll have a deeper opening and some storage for cute little items in between the two spaces. Of course, I'm going to keep my timber paneling throughout the space. And then I want to create a very simple desk on the side where I have a really nice view onto the forest. I was originally thinking about having the same detail 
as the kitchen. I love the kitchen, it's open concept, it would work really well to create shelving and a desk that looks exactly the same. I honestly think that it will just look too busy and just too leggy as well, so I think I would just have more of a floating desk. The desk will then turn into bunkette seating. This bunkette seating is going to be multifunctional. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with the bunkette seating as well. Okay, I live here on my own, but I do occasionally have people over. I mean, I haven't really been able to convince any friends to come over, but perhaps one day someone will come over. And I want people to be able to stay here comfortably, and I don't want it to be a hassle because the house is so small. Now, I do have the guest house, but the guest house is quite a cold little space and it's very small. I might end up actually more using it as a shed or a workshop. So I want to be able to have guests in this house. Now, I was just saying how I'm going to turn the living room into a living room slash bedroom. So I have the bunkette seating, which has this mechanism that you can pull out a bed, add a mattress, and you know, you'll be able to sleep two people there. And I was thinking to do the same thing in this little dining room. So I want to create a bunkette which has the same little pull out system with the slats where you pull out the slats and you create a bed, a single bed, very simple. I thought I was being very clever when I thought a, a mood image about this and then I realized everybody in Vans does it. <laughs> but it's it's such a good idea. I can use the mattress from the bunkette itself, the seat pad and the backrest to turn it into a mattress that is wide enough. And then I want to make it so that you can very easily, during the day, you just take the bedding, you just put it in the storage underneath the bunkette seat, and then everything is clean. You don't have this guest bed that's just kind of taking up an entire room. Let's also have a look at materials because I did have a little look at the materials for the banquette. I always wanted it to be either a white or maybe a rust colored velvet. Now the curtains I have in the room currently are white so I very much like the rust but then I was on this website and I saw this fabric which is just really cool. And it actually looks really nice against the rust, so who knows, maybe I'll turn it into the backrest. But maybe it'll be a little bit too much, I'm not really a traditional type person. I'm also always quite liking a tartan, but probably I'll keep it very simple, kind of have this very calm look because I'll have all the timber. And then with all the items that you're going to put on display in such a small space, it will easily feel filled up anyways. This wall, I want to do something just a little bit different. I was thinking of, instead of continuing the tongue and groove, to actually use a board of ply and use it as the backdrop for a large piece of art. Right now, I have drawn in my big white chair here to sit next to the, the bookcase, but in reality, that chair is probably going to live in the living room at some point, and then this will have maybe a longer table here to allow for a dining area. This is a big task. It's, it's a little bit more than just putting in flooring and walls. Obviously, I'm going to start with ceiling, floor, walls, windows. So they'll be sanding, they'll be painting, they'll be putting up timber, timber things. Oh gosh. <laughs> but first I have to move out. Let's have a look at my new home. In theory, I'm thinking, maybe I'll be done in a couple of weeks. Sand everything, fit in the floors and paint the ceiling. Maybe, maybe I'll be back in my room in a few weeks. In reality though, this is probably going to be my home for like the next year. <laughs>